very much. So our text is Luke chapter 4. Today we're dealing with temptations. Let me read it. And then uh, I was amazed to see how many preachers say and believe that Satan and the devil are two different people or, or, or angels. I was amazed. And uh, we can clarify that just in this text alone. We don't have to go very far. Um, I just want to get that clear so that we're not talking about two uh, angels tempting Jesus. Matthew, uh, Mark 1.15 says, Satan tempted him. And here you will see the devil's tempting him. But when Jesus rebukes him, Jesus says, Satan! Get behind me. So it's not, nothing to be confused about that Satan and the devil is the very said one person. Okay, we read Luke 4, and I'll come back to the text. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, turned, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit. Those are key phrases. Led by the Spirit. Into the wilderness. It's amazing. Some places where the Holy Spirit will lead you. Being 40 days tempted of the devil. In those days he ate nothing. And when they were ended. He was hungry afterwards. The devil said to him. There were three times he's going to present if. Satan always comes with a question. Same thing in the garden. God always has the answer for his questions. And so if you be the son of God, command the stone that it be made bread. That's the first temptation. Jesus answered him. And I'm so glad that Jesus always have an answer to the devil's question. Hallelujah. And Jesus answered him saying, it is written. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Now, devil's making, a, he failed there, he makes another attempt. And the devil, taking him up to a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of this world in a moment of time. So some people say that was spiritual. The devil can't touch Jesus and he can't take him up physically. Well, Jesus allowed it. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give you and the glory of them. For it's delivered unto me. Lie. And to whom, sir, ever I will, I give it. Lie. He gives nothing. He's greedy and selfish and wants more. Next, if. If, therefore, you will worship me, all this shall be yours. Happy hour. Jesus answered again and said, get thee behind me. Who? So why he didn't say devil? All the time it's the devil doing it. Now Jesus addresses him. These are two words. Uh, nicknames, titles for Lucifer. And so he addressed him by the one that supposes God. Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, him only shall you serve. And that's the question I will pose to you. Who are you serving? And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And that's probably the highest spot. If you look at a picture at that time, the Kidron Valley was right there. And it could be a 2,000 foot drop. And uh, he took him up on the pinnacle, top most part, and said unto him, jump. If you be the son of God, cast yourself down from hence. The temptation. It is written again. He shall give his angels charge over. You think you could quote scripture? The devil knows the Bible. He can quote it. Here he's quoting it for Jesus. He said, look, okay, let me give you the word. You see, not everybody who brings the word to you brings a word that is of the spirit of God. You got to be careful with that. He's bringing a word. And a, 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 a real prophetic word. A truly written word. He said, okay, you talking about it written? Let me, let me quote something that's written. Verse 10, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep you. 
And in their hands he shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. The boy is quoting it all the way. Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptations, he departed him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit unto Galilee. Okay. Do you have temptations? I have temptations. Let's make it clear that temptation is not a sin because Jesus was tempted. It's yielding to the temptation that produces sin. So I have a, I have a serious temptation. In, a, in the house, and that's because I have a weakness. And the, devils know, the devil know my weakness. And he sets the bait right where I'm weak. And I'm talking about chocolate. Because I love chocolate. And the family knows that. And you just will bring two big stack of Ferrero Rocher and put it right by my computer. And then Candice will bring Cadbury and, and little bites and all kinds of just to tempt me. I tell you, <laughs> you're going to have to deal with her for that. So I go out the little office, and, and as he has a drawer, a big drawer, filled with all kind of chocolate stuff. So I pass the other way. Now I go into the kitchen, and on the, I'm not making this up, on the counter, Candice have different types of chocolate laid out. So I play like I don't see that. I don't go there. So I go into the pantry. Well, that's the worst play. They got boxes of different kinds of chocolates. I am fighting temptation against chocolate every hour of every day. And I want you to know, I told him it is written, thou shall not have more than one peg of chocolate a day. And I won. I put aside all the... Uh, Whatever she brought in the office, I hid them. Out of sight? That's true, you know. Out of sight, out of mind. When I don't see it, I don't think about it. But if I see it... <clears throat> so, so what are you fighting? There are struggles, you know. We, we, we go through real struggles. And some people are fighting different kinds of temptation. Um, some people... In their heads, they fight. Thoughts that come and plague them, and they have to deal with them. Before I get to the three temptations, let me give you some uh, roundabout material just to uh, bring us to the temptation. Temptation in this and in the garden can be categorized in three categories. Every temptation and every sin falls in one of these categories. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Take any sin and you could pack it them into one of these categories. So we're dealing with categorically uh, the, the temptations in the Garden of Eden uh, where they failed. And in, now just look at this. They had a garden, a beautiful garden. And they couldn't make it. The environment. Jesus was led by the spirit. In the wilderness. Tempted in harsher environment. And so some people have it easy. But they still have temptation. And some people have it hard. And still have temptation. So what's the outcome? Let's go to the scriptures. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. I want you to know. You can't fight the devil half full. You cannot fight the devil half full of the Holy Spirit. It's commanded in Ephesians. Be ye filled. Fill. 
The worst thing to happen in Christianity is a half-filled believer trying to overflow. He has a lot of work to do. He's pumping up, pumping up things. We don't have to pump up the Holy Spirit. If you're half full, you can be full full. You ever eat and you know, and you're feeling like you're, you're still hungry? And you say, and belly not full? Well, you can be full of the Holy Spirit. I want you to know that. You don't have to live a half filled life because Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost. And you have to be full of the presence and power of the Holy Spirit to meet with the devil and to overcome temptations. You don't have that. It's not going to work. Full of the Holy Ghost. Being half full will not cut it. And he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. We think that the, the, the Holy Spirit will always lead us in pleasant places. In palm springs, in the desert. Yes, he will. But there are times when he will lead you out of the beaten path. He will lead you away from the crowd. He will lead you into lonely zones where it's you, God, and the devil. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit living in you, you're really going to be suffering some defeats. So, my topic is the Spirit-led life. He was led by the Spirit. So I am going to talk to you about the Spirit-led life. Or when the, the life that is led by the Holy Spirit. And Romans make it very clear. For as many as are led, led by the Holy Spirit, they are the sons and daughters of God. And if God is not leading us, we are missing something. We have to, I say with emphasis, we have to be led by the Spirit of God. <laughs> give Him praise if you're going to give Him praise. Because you have an option to choose your own way. You have an option to look at the normal situation like Adam and Eve did. And let the eyes do the judging. And let the heart do the judging. But if the Spirit of God don't lead you, you will be missing the mark all the time. How many of you have prayed for something and went ahead and, and bought it or did it. And then later found out it wasn't of God. I have prayed many times over many things and went ahead and did it and found out later it was not of God because I was led by the circumstances. I was driven by situation and I came to a normal logical conclusion that anybody would come to only to find out later on I had to pay a heavy price for it because I was not led by the Spirit. So, the Spirit-led life it's a life that will follow the will of God and do it at all times. Amen. He was led by the Spirit. So I'm going to ask you the question, who leads you? I hope it's not your pastor. The guy needs leading himself. Who leads you? Oh yeah, I follow a TV preacher. He's the greatest preacher. I, 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 I look at him every day. And he influences my life, you say. Who leads you? What leads you? What makes you do what you do? Fear? Are you driven by fear and you feel that if you don't do it, you failed? And that people look at you and say you're a coward? What drives you? Faith? Fear of faith? What drives you? Feelings? Boy, you know, I feel to do this. I really have a deep gut feeling to do this. And when you follow feelings, it depends on what kind of morning you had. Was the coffee good? Breakfast was good? Conversation was good? You feel good. It's good to feel good. But I am pointing the question. Are you led by your feelings? Well, today I don't feel to go to church. Well, I don't feel like shaking anybody's hand today. I'm just going to walk in and walk out. 
because I'm in a bad mood. And if anybody catch me in my bad mood, they'll see the other side of me. We've already seen the other side of you. If you don't have the Holy Spirit manifesting, we've seen the other side of you. That's the normal side. That's the natural man. That's the Adamic side. And that's called carnal. So the question is, who leads you? What is leading you? And we will see that Jesus heard from heaven at the Jordan. And once you have heard from heaven, the Holy Spirit will lead you. Give him praise if you're going to give him praise. Once you've heard from heaven, the Holy Spirit will lead you. So, verse 2 being, 40 days tempted of the devil. So you have a temptation now and again. 40 consecutive continuous days, he was tempted by the devil. We only have three mentioned. I don't know if there were more, but these are the categories that we can narrow them down to. So, he tempted him for 40 days. And those days, he did eat nothing. So if, if you feel that you are being overly tempted, wait for the, my next point. Uh, you will see that temptations are seasonal. And that, let me know, let me wait for it. And in those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterwards was hungry. I like that phrase, when it was ended. Your temptation will end. Your struggle with the flesh will end. Your days of hunger and famine will all be over. It's going to come to an end. He can't put pressure on you all the days of your life. You will live to enjoy Jesus. Your latter days will be better than your former days. You will grow in health and wealth. Hallelujah. It has ended. I am bet betting on God's grace that your troubles and your temptation and your trial have an expiry date. And it will end. Say with me. It will end. It must end. I can't live like this for the rest of my life. I can't live hopping, hopping, hopping one day, one day in and out. In and out. I shall be well. I shall be healthy. I shall wake up every morning with spring in my heels. I am positive about the goodness of God in the land, ooh, the land of the living. I will not die, but I will live. And I will declare, declare the glory of the Lord. Come on, declare the works of the Lord over your life. Speak into your life positive words. Woo, hallelujah. It will come to an end. You will not forever be fighting the enemy. You will have rest. You will have rest. This too shall pass. Glory to God. Rest is coming. Rest is coming. You could find that in the Old Testament. And the enemy came not into Israel for the rest of the days of the king. In Judges you will find that the land had rest for 20 years and 40 years. And they lived in peace. There's a day coming when all what you're going through now is probably necessary to bring you to that place of rest. Labor to enter into his rest. You have to struggle a little bit to get there. But when you get there, God's rest is going to be sweet and wonderful. Hallelujah. The devil said unto him, after that, 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 that was a summary statement uh, when it was ended. So it's like saying the end up front. Now let's go look at the uh, temptations, and we could be on our way home. Verse 3, verse 7, and verse 9. The devil puts the ifs. The three ifs. If this, if that, if this, if that. He's a very iffy person. So if you go and drive today, you might get in an accident. So if you're mistaking your tablet this morning, you're going to get sick. 
Don't let him if you up. Don't let him if you down and if you around. Because God has a bigger if. If he could if, God could if too. God said, if you ask anything in my name, you're going to have it. God said, if my people, if my people shall call up, I will hear from God has a bigger if than the devil. So if he ifs you, you if him back. Give him the word. That's what Jesus did. He brought the temptation. Jesus brought the word. You got to have the word in you. You got to know the word. You got to memorize the word. You got to speak the word and quote the word. The word is your power in the spirit led life. Hallelujah. So when he says if, he's putting a question. And God settles it with an answer. The point is, do not put an if where God, do not put a question where God puts a conclusive statement. God said it. It's, the Bible says it. I believe it. That settles it. Hallelujah. Don't put a question mark where God puts a full stop. God said it. Hey, say it. You can say what you want. You have a mouth. You talk. You lie. You even take the scripture and lie with it. That's how dangerous lying is from the devil. He's a liar. The father of lies. And you don't have to say, you don't have to say the devil is a liar. He knows it. You don't have to remind him. That's his character. He's born a liar. Well, sorry. He became a liar. He was born good. He was created good. And I often wonder how some good people turn evil. What we notice again is Jesus had a scripture for every temptation. And you've got to be prepared with the word of God to do battle. And above all, take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That you might be able to stand against the wiles and the tricks of the devil. What's the most important weapon in the believer's armor? The sword of the spirit. Which is the word of God. Which is quick and powerful and sharp two-edged sword. Cutting and dividing up anything in front of it. Carry the word. Hold the word. Believe the word. Read more of the word. I know people like to sit down with a nice novel. That's good. But don't let anything take the place of the word of God. Every night, I will read a psalm or something before I go to bed. That's my last duty. And first thing in the morning, I want to hear what God says. It, it, I, one of my programs, Bible programs, has a shake. You shake it, and, and a verse comes up. And if I don't like it, I go to the next one. Because I want a good word for the word for the, for the day. Something to strengthen me and something to give me power to fight against the enemy. So what's the difference between Satan quoting scripture and Jesus quoting scripture? Satan said, it is written. And so, some people can quote the Bible as it is, in, as it is written. In our TV program on YouTube, I've decided to change it is written to as it is written. Amen. See, that's a big difference. It is written is, is Satan quoting, but he didn't quote it as it was written. Yeah. Same trick he pulled on Eve. He said something, but he didn't say it as God said it. And if you're going to fight, you have to say it as it is written, as God said it. Don't just quote it halfway. The boy knows his Bible. And you've got to know yours too. That's why we're passing out scripture verses just to familiarize you. We're not treating you like Sunday school kids. But we want you to get accustomed to the word of God. And practice it. And believe it. And store it in your heart and head. Thy words have I hid in my heart. That I might not sin against you. 
Where is the word in your head or in your heart? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If your heart is filled with the word of God, you will automatically think the word of God. Because your heart is full of it. Can I hear somebody? Hallelujah. So let's quote it as it is written. Let's go to temptation number one. Verse 3. If you be the son of God. You see. Satan was not sure. That this man. Was the Messiah. And the incarnated one. He wasn't sure. See, he doesn't know everything. He pretends. He makes you believe he knows your tomorrow. He does not know your tomorrow. He will set up tricks and traps to catch you. But the devil is not all knowing. He's not omniscient. God says, I know the plans I have for you. And only God knows it. And sometimes he, by Romans, he may reveal to you what is planned. But the devil don't know you tomorrow. He could set traps and make things worse. But he doesn't know what God's plan for your life is. So, if you be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Well, he realized that Jesus had power to do this or else he wouldn't have asked him to do it. And here's the biggest temptation I have found in ministers' lives, in pastors' lives, and people who are gifted and talented, and people who are anointed by the Spirit and can prophesy and can preach and can rock the church. This is the biggest temptation and they haven't realized it. Take stone and turn it into bread. In other words, use your gifts and your talents for self-survival. You have a ministry. Well, raise money and live good. You do miracles. Well, make, take advantage of it. Let them bring in the thousands. You live fancy and you live right and you live well. That is the temptation. And many are falling for it. They will sell you everything. If they sign a Bible that they didn't print, you have to pay for that signature. Tape? Why should I pay $20 for a tape when I could buy a Bible for $5? I always say. Amen. That's why in this church we don't sell anything. We give it away because God provides, we give it away. <laughs> Nothing for sale here. Hallelujah. You give your tithes, God bless you. You don't give him, he's still going to bless you. But if you give, he give bless you more. Amen. Yeah. We don't bully people here for money. It's your business. And answering that which Jesus could have done. He said it is written that man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word of God. So how do we live? How does the spirit led life survive in a hostile environment? We are so blessed that we can have three meals. Some, some of us have five. A day. But child of God, we can't survive by bread alone. I don't care how good a cook you are and what your menu is and your recipe, you cannot live by bread alone. The spirit man cannot survive on the natural things. And the spirit man is the inner man, the stronger man. The body is just the carrier. But the man inside is a real man. And that inner man must be stronger than the outer man. And for the inner man to be stronger than the outer man, you have to feed the inner man. And to feed him is with the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word. That proceeds out of the mouth of God. Say amen if that's believing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the devil lost that round. Round number two. Took him up to a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. You think CNN is good? He's better than CNN. <laughs> the devil said unto him, all this power I will give you and the glory of them. And it's for me to give to whoever I want to give it to. 
I just like you. So I choose to give it to you. Yeah, don't fall for his love talk. And Jesus answered unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. Amen. Not devil. Satan, go behind my back. So if you say the devil is following you, he's in the right place. If the devil is in front of you, leading you, he's in the wrong place. The spirit should be in front of you, and the devil should be behind you. Let the devil push you. That's okay. I don't mind being pushed by the devil. I just don't want to be led by him. Reminds me of a joke I told many, many times. This pastor's wife, four, four pastors, somebody gave them a, a good offering, and she wanted this red dress so badly. So she went, fighting temptation, okay? She stole in the storefront this beautiful red dress. It's a little pricey, but she hadn't bought anything for a long time. And she thinks this would look really good for Christmas. So she looked at it, walked away. You know, that, that really looks nice. So she said, no, I'm not going. Now. Let me just go and, ch- and find out. She went and talked to him. Well, you know how salespeople are. She said, come on, try it on. <laughs> Watch it bit by bit. From no, we can't afford it. Too, it looks good. Let me go inside and check it. And now try it on. So she finally bought it and went home. And when the pastor saw it, he said, Didn't you resist that temptation? She said, Yes, honey, I, I, I did my best. And when I tried it on, it looked so good. And I said, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> and when Satan went behind, he said, you look good from behind too. <laughs> so I had to buy it. <laughs> Fighting temptations is not easy. And when you send the devil behind him, make sure you're okay behind Hallelujah. So, he said, cast yourself down. God going to catch you. The contemptation that we face every day is reckless living. And hoping and trusting God will take care of us. What do I mean by that? I mean that you have sugar diabetes. And you see this big piece of cake. And you're going to pray over it and eat it and expect God to take away the calories. That's not fair to God. Not right for you. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Take care of your body. Oh, some of us really love ice cream. And after that piece of cake... In faith, we're going to bless the ice cream. And gobble, gobble, gobble. And then after, you can't walk. Because you're so full. And the devil said, yeah, man. Look, you only live once. Yeah, eat, eat today. Tomorrow you could die. Have a good time today. Enjoy the moment. Reckless living, thou shalt not tempt. Because if you believe you're going to live for the next 20 years, eat well, diet well, so that you can live in a healthy body. Can I hear an amen, somebody? The first temptation is self-preservation. Do what your ministry can provide to make you happy. Turn bread into, turn stone into bread. The second temptation is to live recklessly. God going to take care of you. That's why some of us are suffering right now. Let's go to the last temptation. And he brought him into Jerusalem. A pinnacle. Sorry. Let, let's go back to verse 8. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Because Satan said to him, 
If I give you all this kingdom, all you have to do is worship me. The last temptation is pretend worship. You see, Satan was a worshiper. And he's going to attack every worship leader there is. The biggest problems in ch some churches is in the choir. More people get pregnant in the choir than anywhere else. It's been proven right here in this Baptist church. This big one here. In the choir. They had a youth choir. I'm not gossiping on anybody. It was on the news. They had a nice large youth choir. 23 girls got pregnant in one season. Temptations, fighting them and losing. The problem, uh, why is it a temptation? Is because we worship worship. You understand what I just said there? We worship worship. We adore worship. If the worship is great, hallelujah. Can you worship God in the wilderness when you're alone fighting the enemy? Or can you only worship God when we rock the guitar and the music in church? I watch some church on Facebook dancing and praising God. And I said, oh my gosh, if they would only take off that music and carry on like that, then I'd know it's the Holy Ghost. One day we must stop the music and let's see what's going on. See, people can dance with the true joy. See, people can worship without music. <laughs> thou shalt worship the Lord thy God only, and him shall thou serve. You don't worship worship. You don't worship church. You don't worship leaders. You worship him and him alone, and you serve the Lord God, your Savior, your Deliverer, your Healer, your Baptizer, your soon-coming King. The Spirit will lead you into victory. So in conclusion, Jesus prayed a prayer. In his model prayer, our Father who lives in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Yeah, the translation changes now in the, any other translation. And lead us not to the tempter. No, the evil one. Why did Jesus pray that? Because he knows. Some of us. And I want to. I'll take a, a, a leap in the limb here. Not one of us has met Satan personally. He doesn't worry about us. He has his fellows to take care of us. I had a, a vision dream. About three months ago, and I don't go by this, but it's very interesting. I saw coming up from the south, a beautiful band of angels, beautiful colors. I said, oh my gosh, that is such a beautiful band of angels. And as they came, and it was coming up right about three, 400 feet from me, I saw Satan himself leading, leading the band, and he looks down at me and says, I, am, I don't have time for you yet. I am going to Washington. He's into politics. I'm not making that a doctrinal issue. I'm just saying. That we are to watch and pray. Lest we enter. Into temptation. Amen. And so Jesus prayed, Father, don't let them meet this guy. He's not easy to deal with. And so he has organized his army into principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness. But he's on top. And I'm telling you, we say it often the devil did this, the devil. Poor fella. Jesus sat, saw him one day sitting down by the roadside crying. Satan, what happened? He says, it's your people. <laughs> it's your people. They blame me for everything. 
they do their own thing and they say, I did it. So let's, let's realize who we're dealing with. We're dealing with demonic forces. We're dealing with fallen spirits. Not necessarily a captain. But when that come against you, in Jesus' name, cast them out. Rebuke them. Have the victory. Walk in the victory. Yes, we will face temptations. But yes, we are overcomers. God bless you.